Good morning, I'm John Melby. This is Gaming with Madness, and today we're going to talk a little bit about a new game, Expedition to New Dell. Expedition New Dell is a relatively new game from 2019 that we just got recently in the store by Alexander Pfister, who's a very well-known designer from a lot of games, including four-game, year gold game, Great Western Trail. It involves building these production buildings. It can do solo game or up to four players. Uh, it takes about two hours or so, particularly the first time through, and it's a legacy game. So if you don't want to play it straight, you can add in the legacy chapter, and then each time you play the game, they will add a few new rules and a few new cards into the game. So Expedition to Newdale came out of Alexander Pfister's earlier game, Oh My Goods, that was a very sh big shock because he had a lot of complex games, then all of a sudden he came out with his little card game that plays a lot quicker. And eventually got enough press that he built a board game out of it. Now, it's rated above medium complexity. Uh, outline on the online services, they're rating it 2.9 out of 5, which really isn't that complex. The only reason it's rated that high is these cards se is seemingly hard for first-time players to understand. So I'm going to talk about these cards first, and then we'll kind of summarize the whole game. So the cards are what give you the economic engine in this game. On a card, you produce goods. And to produce goods, you drop a little cubes on that thing. Now there's three goods on that card. So here, a little blow up the card so you understand it. This card produces lumber. The lumber is worth two money for each good on there. And when you produce goods, you produce it in two ways. You produce goods based on the number of workers you have, and you produce extra goods based on other goods you have somewhere. Um, the easy way of doing it is just the workers alone, but if you don't get these other goods there in the game, you're kind of losing out your economic engine. So what happens is, in the round, we develop a labor market. If the labor market produces this many laborers of these colors, you will get, to, you will get some goods. And the way that works is, in the game, there's six phases oops, six phases in the game. You turn off one card every turn, and that shows you what the labor market is. For example, a blow up of that card shows we have one yellow, two green, two orange, and a blue. Here on this card, we want three yellow and one blue. And then you plan your actions, which says what kind of production you're going to do. And then to determine the rest of the labor market, you draw four tokens out of the bag and you go, I've got a blue two yellow, and a green. So, did I make it? Yes, I've got one, two, three yellow, and a blue, so we produce. Yay, that's a production. There's another hint on it, but let me get back to this next. Producing from goods, that symbol there says, if I have any goods that have that symbol on them, like this card, that has that lumber on there, that log on there, I can discard that, and that will give me another production. Okay, now, the next level of this is when you're picking your production, you choose how efficiently you want to produce. And here, you'll have a production from one to three goods to produce. If you choose one, that means I need one fewer worker. So I could produce with three yellow and no blue, or two yellow and one blue. I can produce sloppy, because I don't trust the labor market. Or I can go efficiently and get three out of them, but that means I've got to get two extra workers. So the labor market is three phases. You get this card, you draw some tokens, and then if you're still short, I can take and discard cards from my hand, and for every three cards, that makes up for one of these workers. So this is a little push your luck element. Do I want to go for three goods? Ooh, that'd be nice. I really want those three goods. And here's my card but I've now got to get five, or no, six workers to make that happen. And if it fails, I lose a lot of my cards from my hand. So the production is, is a really imp important part of it. And then, not only with that production, you want to be able to produce from these other goods as well, in the terms of the games, that's called chain production. So you can have one particular card produce goods that go to another card and go to another card. So as they go from card to card, Say, I take my lumber from here, they're worth two, and they go on to this cooperage. 
the lumber now becomes a good worth three. So automatically I just took all my sawmill goods and make them for value two to three. That's your economic engine and that's what you're trying to do to base the rest of the game on. So that gives you a pretty quick review of what goes on in these markets. Again, that seemed to be the thing that people had the biggest trouble learning, and frankly, it took me about five times reading the rule to figure it out. Once you got it down, it's really not that hard, and as long as someone in the game can explain it to you, that's easy. So the whole game then takes seven rounds. Uh, you'll have a deck of seven cards, one turn up each round that gives you the labor market, and there's a bunch of phases in the game. Turn up the card, you plan your actions, you've got two actions in the initial round, and you put them out here like, I go here and I want to produce something, and then I want to take another action there. After you do all your actions in turn order, then there's a free build phase where you can build more cards or get some cards, and at the end you may have special cards that give you some other powers. So what's going to go on there is we have a bunch of different actions. You've got your production action that you choose by putting one of your workers here, and you've got five other actions here. So what do the actions here do? Really briefly, we won't do them in a lot of detail, but this thing, by paying money, you can get a third or fourth action token, which expands your power. This thing gives you some extra goods, which basically is extra money. This thing gets you extra cards. This thing removes these tokens from your player board that gives you a little extra power. And finally, you can do a second build on your turn as an action token as opposed to the free build here. These things all work together to make everything work fairly well. That's a quick summary of the game. At the end of the game, you'll have got some points during the game. There's some end game points. Uh, there's also, you'll also have a secret objective card that's yours alone. And depending on which chapter of the game, there's an end game goal that you can do to get a fair number of points as well. So the game is seven rounds. Each round you get two actions. And basically the round has an initial event card, you to plan your actions, you get some more workers for the labor market, everybody executes their actions, and then everybody has a free build, and build means you're going to build one of these cards down. So the production on these things here, if you look at an example of these cards, that's an example of, I think, this card down here. This thing says there's two ways to build, you build from a labor market or you build from other goods. The labor market happens when you turn out these event cards. There's an initial set of goods out there, and you, excuse me, a set of laborers. For example, one yellow, two green, two orange, and one blue. You plan all your actions. You go, I'm going to produce here. And then you draw some tokens out of the bag, and you see what the full label mar labor market is. So we draw two, so we have three yellow, three green, two orange, and two blue. So yes, we match the three yellow and one blue. And when you produce goods down here, you can produce them with the ordinary way, or if you don't trust the labor market, you think I'm never gonna get three yellow, you can be sloppy, which gives you one less good, or you can be efficient and get one or two more goods, but that takes more workers. In addition to that, you can use other goods to make this, and this may be other goods from somewhere on the board, for example, if I have goods on here, I can use them to produce these barrels on another card. Or sometimes you can even discard cards to produce goods, like I've got a card here that has that on it, so I can throw that away. And the production happens by dropping little cubes on there. That now means my coal mine has one, two, three, four, five coal on it. And you see down here, if you look closely, coal is worth one, the lumber is worth two, uh, I've got a bakery, so Lowe's are better worth five. Also on these cards, there's a cost to buy them and victory points at the end. A few other things which we won't worry about here. So, you want to develop your engine of a bunch of cards so you can produce things efficiently. Now, when we do this, once we've placed our guys down here, there's a bunch of actions we can do. The production goes on your, on your own board production for the various cards you've got down here. There's five other actions. Real briefly, the first action lets you buy a third or fourth action marker. You can get more goods on here for free. You can get more cards. You can fiddle with these, which gives you more powers. And you can do a build. 
in the turn sequence on phase five, you get a free build already, but you can also take another build with that. Now, just briefly to build a card, let's say I'm building this card, I've got to pay seven, so I look down here, my barrels are here worth three each, so I take two off there, that's six, one off there, that's one, that's seven points. I put it down here in an empty production slot, and that's a build. And when you build something, you take one of your houses and put it out here somewhere on the map. And that gives you victory points and a few other bonuses during the game. This is John Melby. Thank you for watching. We'll see you next time.